Hi guys, what's up? Andre here and welcome to a brand new video where we'll discuss about event storming, a super useful technique when dealing with complexity. So what are you faced when finishing implementing a new complex feature to discover edge case after edge case? Or did you work on a specific component without understanding how the changes impact the overall system? If yes, this technique will help prevent headaches or frustrations when dealing with hidden dependencies, complex mechanics or unclear requirements. The results are surprisingly effective and it is my pleasure to share it with you all. So let's start. So the first step is to schedule a workshop and invite the right people. You will need people who can ask the right questions, usually developers or QA engineers, and people who can answer them, usually the domain experts. The number of participants should be at least four persons, but no more than eight. Otherwise, the logistic or the moderation's effort would be too high. You need a dedicated moderator, as he will have a key role in the workshop. Bring post-its with various colors, especially orange ones. Bring a long, big plotter paper that you can tape onto the entire length of the main wall. Push all chairs and tables to the corner as the workshop will be quite interactive and you need all the participants to be engaged as much as possible. Draw an arrow from left to right on the plotter paper representing the timeline. Your room should look something like this. Step 2. Ask the participants to write down the key events in their domain as an orange sticky note in a verb at past tense and to place them along the timeline. This phase marks the start of the modeling of the whole business line with domain events. Most participants might be a bit confused at the start, but as the first event is added to the board, people start getting in a state of flow. The moderator should keep an eye on all inserted stickers and if there are some that don't follow the rule, example is not a verb at the past tense, he should not interrupt the process but rotate just a bit the sticker to mark that something is not right. Some participants will make remarks on certain events like this is always causing troubles or I have no idea what is going on here. The moderator should capture these warnings on a purple sticker and place them close to the corresponding events. Constraints, issues or ambiguities will be soon exposed. Key terms definition should be captured by the moderator on a special yellow sticky note and placed below the normal flow. This will help build the terminology that is commonly understood. After this phase, your wall should look something like this. Step 3. Start getting deeper into the mechanics and core components of the domain. After having all the events visualized and ordered chronologically, start adding blue stickers that represent user actions, intentions or decision. We will call them commands. For example, cancel subscription or order pizza. Alongside Add small yellow stickers that represent the actor performing the interaction. Discussions will soon go into the direction why should user X perform this action. This forces people to think one layer deeper, since commands are ultimately the results of some decision. By challenging the assumptions and bringing alternative options, you'll have made the first step in improving the overall design. This is why it's important to have key stakeholders participating so the constraints can be updated or policies adjusted. From here you can go further and build aggregates so that you can start modeling the domain model. But for the simplicity's sake, I will stop here and provide you in the description links towards Alberto Brantolini's website, the inventor of this technique. I recommend checking out his videos or presentations and grab his book where he goes in a lot more details on the thoughts behind the method. After the workshop, I usually take picture of the entire wall and also bring the paper roll in the team space so that it's always visible. When team members encounter any difficulties, they come back to it as it represents a source of knowledge that is understood by all technical or non-technical parties. Before we end the video, I will leave you with a final question. 
What is the technique that helps you the most in detecting edge cases and mitigating risk? I look forward to see your answers in the comment section below and don't forget if you like the video subscribe and hit the bell icon. So have a great day and make it happen!